Supermetrics is the undisputed leader in the world of Google Data Studio connectors, and they clearly took advantage of this position to increase their pricing model lately. In this video, we'll compare Supermetrics with five more affordable competitors. Is it possible to get the same service quality while paying less? This is what we'll see. So who are our competitors in the starting blocks? Those are our five competitors. I've looked at two criteria to select them. The price, it needs to be less expensive than Supermetrics. The number of connectors available. It gets interesting if they have more than a dozen. And those are my five criteria to compare all those people. The price, the reputation and trust, the data quality by a standard connector, the dashboard speed, and the client service quality. We'll compare them with the connector they all have in common. The Facebook Insights connector for Data Studio. The one that allows you to get all your Facebook pages data onto your dashboards. I chose this connector as a standard because it's popular, but also because I know it quite well in its Supermetrics version. The behavior of some metrics can be counterintuitive, and I'll take this opportunity to see how the other connectors handle them. So without further ado, let's look at their pricing model. I've put them up here for you. So it's time to pause the video. Pricing models can be very different from one solution to the other. Some can be expensive if you only use one connector, but cheap if you have a bunch. So I've measured the pricing for five scenarios from one connector for a single Facebook account to 15 connectors, each containing 20 accounts. We have a clear winner here, two minute reports. It's the less expensive one, no matter what. But the others aren't bad either if you compare them to Supermetrics, especially when you have to use many connectors. So here are my scores. Supermetrics, one star. PMA, four stars. Data Slayer, three stars. Windsor, four stars. Porter Metrics, four stars. And two minute reports, five stars. Prices often change. Chances are they'll be different when you see this video. So go check the links in the description and see the current prices before taking your decision. Anyhow, I'm begging you, don't just look at their pricing model before deciding. There's a lot of other important criteria you should also consider. When you don't know a brand, you need to be reassured of its legitimacy. That's why I went looking for information to find out how trustworthy each company is. First of all, the Captera score left by users. Well, all six of them have very good scores, which doesn't really help me differentiate them. But at least this is reassuring. Next, the company's creation date. The older it is, the better. Same for the numbers of users. The more, the merrier. About this, Supermetrics is far beyond the rest of the troop, according to the numbers they accepted to give me. The most recent ones, such as Porter Metrics or Two Minute Reports, still need to prove themselves. And that's why they're more affordable. The risk is easier to accept this way. Last thing, the number of connectors. Since the price depends on the number of connectors you use, better is to go with a company that offers a lot of them. And you won't have to go look elsewhere for a missing connector. Once again, don't just look at how many connectors are available. Above all, make sure all those you need are there. All the links are in the description. So, with all this info, here are the reputation and trust scores. Supermetrics, 5 stars. PMA, Data Slayer and Windsor, 4 stars. Portometrics and 2-minute reports, 3 stars. Are those connectors able to give me the insights I need? This is the most important question you should ask yourself. And to answer it, I got my hands dirty. This is the dashboard I designed for my Facebook page with all insights I needed. I've made it with Supermetrics. More details on how I made it in my Data Studio training, which link is in the description. Then I created five copies of this dashboard that I connected to our five competitors. And I struggled more or less to get the same data. Two concrete examples to understand why the Facebook connector can be such a pain. First of all, calculating the number of impressions. On this table, the impressions aren't connected to the period I'm picking here. It's just the number of post impressions from its publication date to today. They call this lifetime impressions. And this is different from the value we see in the table's recap line or in this scorecard that depends on the period selected. This value is the sum of all impressions from all days, no matter when posts were made. And that's the same for shares and clicks. Secondly, calculating the reach. Let's get back to our table. Here, it's the same as for impressions. We see the post reach from its publication date to today, no matter the period selected. But in the scorecard or in the table's recap line with post as a dimension, this isn't the sum of each post reach nor the sum of each day's reach. 
It's yet more complicated. Imagine one visitor. He comes and sees your post during seven days in a row. If you look at the reach on a daily period, you'd see a reach of one during those seven days. But if you look at the reach over the seven days period, you'd also have a reach of one, because it's the same user we touch upon those seven days. The reach doesn't add up day by day. You have to look at it over a predefined period of time. And Facebook's API only gives it over periods of 1, 7, or 28 days. But then, what happens when you select a full month? Well, Supermetrics is slightly cheating. The reach is in fact the one of the last 28 days of the month, which explains why you don't see the same value as the one on Facebook's insights. <sighs> that was tough, no? Now let's see how Supermetrics competitor calculate all of that. How does PMA calculate metrics? The rich, organic, paid or total, gives me broken scorecards and table when the period is different than 1, 7 or 28 days. PMA doesn't cheat like super metrics, but it's still a bit annoying to get broken table because of that. Therefore, we need to set the period to 20 days to properly compare it with super metrics. And then, all metrics are aligned. Impressions are automatically translated into the matching metric called views. Same goes for likes and clicks, but my shares are measured differently. Here, shares are measured as the sum of each post share, not as the sum of all days share. All right, now the post table. It took me a while to get back on track because the indicators didn't find their match, but this remains doable. The dates table, the share metric is unfortunately not compatible with dates, so it's impossible to get the numbers of share by day with PMA. That's a shame, but overall, it's doing quite well. I'm giving them four stars for the metrics quality. Now let's see the Data Slayer connector. How does Data Slayer calculate metrics? New likes give me the last day's value, not the value of the full period. Same for my scorecards with the reach and impressions, even though it works well on graphs. Now about shares, the same thing happens as on PMA. We get the sum of post share and not the sum of each day's share. Clicks are slightly different, I don't really know why. For the post table, I got no trouble. Everything automatically translated. And also, the recap line is correct. Contrary to Supermetrics, so very good point here, I guess. For the dates table, nothing to do either. But once again, the metrics we see come from the post made during the period, contrary to Supermetrics, who was showing the metrics of all posts during this period. All right, four stars for Data Slayer. How does Windsor calculate metrics? The like scorecard sums up all these likes. However, the scorecard of new likes works well. So does the graph. But the first day is missing, go figure why. About impressions and reach, this is a total misery. I do have an indicator called page impressions unique, which vaguely resembles the total impression and reach, but it's impossible to get the others, and shares are missing. As for my two tables, same struggle. No metrics are comparable. Shares and reach are missing. I consistently get an error when I try to put the post impressions on the first table. In short, that's bad. Windsor, I'm sorry, but I'm giving you one star on the metrics quality. My test wasn't exhaustive, I only tested one connector, so this bad score doesn't mean that all of Windsor's connectors are bad. Up to you to test them on other connectors and get your own opinion. How does Porto Metrics calculate metrics? My organic impression scorecard gives me the last value and not the sum. About the shares, the same thing happens as with PMA. It's the sum of each post share, not the sum of each day's share. Same for clicks. No problem for the post table, but it's impossible to get the shares and clicks on the dates table. Portal metrics, I'm giving you four stars. How does two minute report calculate metrics? Unfortunately, I couldn't get the total likes as a scorecard. The reach gives me the sum of each day's reach. Yikes. And shares are missing. On my tables, I see no post click, but a post link click that I can add up to the post other click to get back to what Supermetrics proposes. The rest is okay. Overall, this is decent. To meet reports, I'm giving you three stars. All right, let's recap everyone's scores. Supermetrics, it's hard to evaluate them, but if I had to, I would give them five stars. PMA, four stars. Data Slayer, four stars. Windsor, one star. Portometrics, four stars. And two minute reports, three stars. Let's move on to something very important, but quite often neglected, your dashboard's loading speed. You can have one kilo dashboard, if it takes one minute to load, no one will use it. And that's why I started my timer and made two tests. First test, the dashboard is already open, and I changed the period to select the month of August. 
How long does the dashboard take to update? Here are the results. From 6 seconds for our Usain Bolt Power My Analytics to 44 seconds for Windsor. Second test. I'm opening my dashboard in a private window. How long does it take to load? There, some bad students on the previous test are doing much better. So, here are my scores for the dashboard speed. Supermetrics, 4 stars. PMA, 5 stars. Data Slayer, 1 star. Windsor, 2 stars. Portal Metrics, 3 stars. And 2 minute reports, 2 stars. You don't need it if all goes well. But this can become really problematic if you face an issue. That's why I asked two questions to our competitors. The first one was the same for all. I have a table with all my posts made in September, showing their number of impressions. I've made a PDF export of my dashboard last week. I made another one this week. I see that the value of impression are slightly above the previous ones, even though I selected the same periods, September. Why is that? Remember, this is what I explained a few minutes ago. Impressions are lifetime values. They depend on the date you look at the dashboard, not the period of time you select. I didn't send screenshots. They didn't want to make their job too easy. I wanted to see if some of them would be able to give me the reason straight away, or if I was going to need several back and forces. The second question was different for each of them, but globally, I asked them how they were calculating the reach and why was I seeing a different value as on my Facebook's insight. With my two questions, I understood something. Your question never directly reached the most qualified technicians. There's always a filter made by someone else in order to avoid overloading technicians with basic questions. My two questions were pretty specific though, so they could have been directly forwarded to the technicians. But this wasn't the case. Each company got back to me at least once, asking for screenshots or dashboard access before sharing my question with those who are most likely to have the answer. Well, I guess that's part of their standard procedure. So here are my scores for each client service. Supermetrics and PMA, 4 stars. I didn't get my answers straight away, which is why I'm not giving them 5 stars, but good answers were fast to come, without too many back and forces. Data Slayers, Portal Metrics and 2-Minute Reports, 2 stars. I got someone to answer me quite fast, but it was tedious to get to the correct answer. And in the end, for those three, I only managed to get one correct answer. It was quite frustrating, long, like 5 or 6 back and forces, to get to the beginning of the answer. I also had to send them back my question several times. Windsor, one star. And yet, I'm being generous. My questions were left into a limbo for one week before I went back to them. I got someone over the chat that really answered at random without even proposing to investigate further. So in the end, if we put all the scores on one single table, this is what we have. Supermetrics, four stars. PMA, four stars. Data Slayer, three stars. Windsor, two stars. Portal metrics, 3 stars, and 2 minute reports, 3 stars. In my opinion, one is doing way better than the others. PMA. That's the only one who does the job as well as Supermetrics, while being less expensive. If you want to save some money without compromising the rest, PMA seems to be the right choice. Now if your budget is very tight and you're ready for some compromises on the speed or the client service, you might want to try 2 minute reports. And finally, if money is no worry and you want to take zero risk, well then, stay with Supermetrics. You'll pay more, but you'll be in the leader's very safe hands. I hope this benchmark was useful. And I'd like to express that it was absolutely not sponsored by anyone. I really wanted to give you my unbiased opinion on Supermetrics alternative for Data Studio. So let me know in the comments if you agree with me. But in any case, do your own test before committing. All the links are in the description and all connectors propose free trials. So just go for them. See you soon.